All right, so moving on, I've got a new handout for you because what we want to do is we want to see, do I have backlinks to my site? Do I have positive backlinks? Do I have negative backlinks? We can look at that in our Webmaster Tools. Last week we set up Bing Webmaster Tools, uh, Google Search Console, and Google Analytics. All three of those can give us a report of backlinks. So I've got a handout for you. You can go to the uh, network folder. So go to the desktop and open computer. At the top left, open computer. We'll go to the network folder here, network location, classroom data Z. <coughs> Scroll down to find campus Thursday, campus SEO Thursday. Double click that, and um, any of the documents from a previous week that you missed are still there. But today's document is the one titled Campus SEO 3 Backlinks. You want to drag that to your desktop to get a copy of it. Item number three, and I'll put in my notes that I'm writing a little bit later. Three backlinks. And again, you can print that later. You don't really need to print it because it's got online links. But copy SEO three backlinks and then we'll open it. After you copy it, you want to open your copy of it. Put it on the desktop. If you've got a flash drive, you can save it there or you can email it to yourself at the end of the day. So let's see what I've got here backlinks strategy. What are backlinks and why are they important? Nowadays the search engines care about quality more than ever. The ranking of your website is elevated when quality sites link to it. Backlinks then are very important to create authority and quality on your website which in turn raises your page rank. So this is guilt by association but in the best way. So I suppose what's the opposite of guilt? not guilt. <laughs> so, uh, good websites speaking to you make yours a good website as well. There's a, a section in the book that I mentioned and links to, to, to the book. I don't get any sort of kickback or anything from mentioning the book, but I do recommend the book. And I also mentioned the author's other book, which is the SEO checklist. This one is, if your site has been around a while and doesn't seem to rank well anymore, or never did, the step-by-step -step guide is perfect. So this one is if you had a website that used to rank well and now it's not ranking well, you might have negative SEO to work with, this checklist helps you dig yourself out of that hole. This other one is sort of like from the beginning to end. That's the one that I was showing earlier in the day. Both books are pretty inexpensive. I have these different sections in this handout, finding your bank links, <coughs> organizing your backlinks, taking advantage of your backlinks, and then dealing with bad backlinks. So we'll look at all of these things right now. The first thing is I want to get the report. I want to see what the search engines see about my site. And we'll do it backwards like also we did last week. We'll do Webmaster Tools first for Bing. Then we'll do Google. Webmaster, also known as Search Console, and then we'll do Analytics. So first we need to log back into our Bing Webmaster Tools. So open up your web browser, go to bing.toolbox.com. So the address, bing.com slash toolbox. Go ahead and take a moment to log in with the information we created previously, and then I'll show you what we need to look at. Log into bing.toolbox, bing.com slash toolbox, I mean.
All right, so once you log in, you, you may not be exactly here just yet, but you can catch up. Once you log in, you will see your website or websites. It will be listed here on Bing with various bits of data. What my handout says is pretty straightforward. You have your website. You're going to click on it to view its dashboard. You're going to go to the reports and data on the left side, and then you will see inbound links. Bing calls them inbound links, but it's the same thing. Backlinks, incoming links, etc. So I'm just going to choose a client here. I'm going to click on their account. On the left side, you'll see a variety of screens here. Under reports and data. You will see inbound links. Click on inbound links. It's been pretty steady over the last month, the number of links to this site. You may see more or less. You may see nothing. And that's okay if you just set this up last week. You might not see anything yet because it's, it's, it, it's, uh, it, it was just set up. There's not much data to show. But, then at, but down below the graph, then I see here's a page on the client's website, and, and it has these number of links from other websites pointing to it. So the main home page has 630 links identified by Bing. The second most linked page on the site is this blog post, The Amazing Magay Plant. Third is another page on the site. This is the history of, of the barbecue in Spanish. Next is the menu. Next is catering. Next, a couple more blog posts for content. So here I get a quick overview. These are the most linked to pages on the client's site. I can see those links exactly by clicking either the link here on the left or the number. So if I want to click on, okay, who's linking to that Magay Plant blog post? I can click. It pops up to show me from the website dnainfo.com, from survivingmexico.com, several times. Lots of times from that particular one, DNA Info, and it says, on that other website, this is what was the active link. Uh, from their website, this was active. They, someone could click on it, and it went back to the client's site, specifically that page. Well, it's not just enough to see the links. You have to make these judgment calls, because what I've got is organizing your backlinks. Download your links and compile them in a spreadsheet document. Review them periodically and add notes and highlight colors. So what I mean by that is, I'm going to download this. There's a download button. And it's going to give me just a simple Excel document, a spreadsheet. What I can do with that Excel sheet then is make notes. For example, I'm going to follow a link, and I'm going to see, actually, that's a spam site. So I'm going to make a note in the spreadsheet, spam site. Because then I need to, if it's a negative site, I need to do the bad backlinks portion. If it's a good link, I need to do the good strategy. So what I'm saying here is there's an export button. I'm going to export, download all of this data so that I can work with it. <coughs> I can click export. It's uh, Excel. It's a spreadsheet, so I'll open it in Excel. You can open it in Numbers on the Mac or any other software you use for spreadsheets. Google, Google Docs, for example. So here are all the links. 
the anchor text. And since it's my own document now, I can make a new field here for a new cell for notes. I'm going to check, okay, this DNA info, what is that actually? So I, I can click to follow the link. It's going to take me to the originator of the link. DNA info seems to be like a dining site, a review site, focusing in New York. Well, the restaurant is not in New York. But I see that this particular blog post, while talking about this other restaurant in New York, mentions my day, and that is an active link to the client's website. So I might not have heard of DNA Info before, but it looks like a professional site. It's well designed. Um, it has social media, it has a newsletter, so it seems to be a pretty good website. I'm getting this great link from them. So I would write on my notes, say notes, good site. I can even do colors, right? It's my own document. I can right colors. Let's say I do the research and I find out that this one over here is a bad one, so I can color code it as well. I'll talk about what to do with good and bad links in a moment, of course. But you wouldn't even know this. You wouldn't know who's linking to your site unless you've got these webmaster tools set up and you check them. Once a month is a good goal. Log in, download the file, look at it, compare it with the old month. So once a month, check your links. Because if you've got good links, you want to take advantage of them, as we'll see. And if you've got um, bad links, we want to disavow them. We want to have Google ignore them. Bing ignore them. Let's say I look at another page. What about the home page? That one I can also download, but just as a quick view, I see San Diego Reader. San Diego Eater, Food GPS, LA Times, uh, etc. So I'm seeing these links from these other websites that we do not control. We don't have a say in what LA Times writes. Um, <coughs> we didn't pay to be listed on the 23 best tacos from Thrillist.com. Over here at Thrillist, the best taco shops in 23 LA hoods. Somewhere here the client has a link. Right there, so a little free advertising from this blog, a little, little write-up, and a link back to the website. There's another big professional site. That link is very much appreciated. Quality websites linking to my website, my client's website, raising the quality of the of the client as well, raising their presence on the social, raising the presence on the search engines. Well, the point of this, not only am I getting good SEO results from being linked, but I'm going to engage in what I've got here about taking advantage of your backlinks, the good ones. Now that you have a backlink report, you can create more authority for your site. The tactic is to link quality content to the links that link to your own site. So that sounds like circular logic, but what it is is, for example, tweet about a positive restaurant review. On Facebook, post about a link to a blog post that positively reviewed your product. That strategy is in that SEO book, and it's in the backlinks to backlinks. The more good content that is pointed to sites that link to you, the more your SEO rank could increase. This takes a lot of work, but could pay off. So concretely, what I'm saying is, I've discovered that this that the client is on an is on an article here that talks about them very nicely 
So what I could do is I could share this article from the client's Twitter account or Google Plus or Pinterest or Facebook or Snapchat or whatever. I can share this other website from our social media, driving traffic to them so our own followers would see this article that they didn't know about. Our own followers could, you know, follow the link back, but most likely our own followers will reshare what we shared, and now we're reaching more people to see the original article and drive the traffic back to the website. So like a feedback loop, we're going to share. I, when I talk about the strategy, I call hyping your links. I'm going to take this positive link and from whatever of our social networks, share it to more people, and therefore causing more people to see it, and more traffic to the site, and the search engines see that, and that helps your SEO. I could do this a little stealthily also from my own personal Twitter account. Maybe on my own personal Twitter account, I've got 2,000 followers, and I could be obvious or not and share this, which, is, which could be helping the client. That's up to you to decide if you wanted to go that, that direction, but um, the point is whenever you find any positive mentions of yourself, it's okay to share them so that you can get further traffic. So let's see any other one here. Tasting table. I haven't seen this one actually, but let's take a look. Right here on the second paragraph, they mention the restaurant. And so um, this is another very good one. This is another very good article that mentions the client in a positive light, so it would be useful um, to further share this one, to hype this post. Maybe we'll go share it on our Google Plus, and write, and in some way try to also let the original authors know about it so that can get further shared. For example, Sarah Ventiera. I could do a little research. Is Sarah on Twitter? probably. I can find her Twitter name on Twitter, and then I can share this from the client and say, great write-up by Sarah about our drinks. Happy to be included. Sarah could see it. People like to get praised. Sarah could have 2,000 followers. She then retweets our tweet and now reaches 2,500 more people rather than our, own, than our own 500 only. So it's like a game of telephone. It's, you know, What's another way to say it? It's, it's word of mouth. It's word of mouth, especially if you tap into people that are active on social media. So just to, just to be curious, I'm going to look up, is Sarah Ventieri on Twitter? Professional eater, writer, cocktail free cookbook, etc. This is probably the same person. Sarah here. I don't see her picture, but I do see an article about alcohol, and she seems to say she's into alcohol and such, so that's probably her. So that's what I would do. She tweeted on the 12th, so she's relatively active. That would be the strategy. I would log in as the client, and I would craft a tweet with a link to her article and say, you know, great write-up by Sarah Vintieri. Um, happy to share the spotlight with, and then maybe mention some other company listed here too, Mosto. Find them on Twitter. They're on Twitter probably. And maybe one of those two will, will retweet us because Sarah had 532 followers. And maybe this Mosto 
has also a few hundred followers, and then that's furthering our reach. Our followers would see it, and um, piggybacking on on the others could also work. Mosto, exceptional, unpretentious, bona fide Italian patio dining. Is that it? Some goes from Mosto and San Francisco, which offers IC. So that might be it. So that's strategy. That's that's another Twitter account. They've got 174. So 500 from that one account, 170 from this other account, 500 from our own followers. We're reaching you know nearly a thousand people. Then only our own 500. That's obviously the the deeper. Um, tactics of social media for another class. But that's why you want to find out, am I getting, do I have links to my site? What positive links do I have and how can I take advantage of them? So any questions on that before we go on to the negative? What do we do with negative links? So any questions on what do we do with positive links? Let's see if I can find an example of a negative of negative links. Okay, so let's see this other client. There's tripwhat.com, a blog on Yahoo in Japan, Third Avenue Village Association, <coughs> the culture trip in a trans.net, yellow pages. bestrated.com so I'm not finding anything that's clearly obviously spam but let's say let's say this one is let's say this particular website is spam how do you know exactly you have to have practice looking at these websites but oftentimes giveaways are that they've got a lot of ads on the page, that one's got two, that's not so bad, but a lot of ads, that it doesn't have any original content, it's just copied content from your own website or other websites. You get a feel for it, a badly designed site. You know, there's various ways to tell a spam site and you'll get better at it as you, as you do it. But let's say this was a bad site. It could be hurting my, my rankings because guilt by association. Innocence, that's the word I was looking for earlier. No one thought of it. Opposite of guilt, innocence. So, guilt by association. Let's say that website is bad. I've got here <coughs> bad backlinks. Both Google and Bing provide the disavow links tool to minimize the impact of bad links. In Bing, we've got a couple clicks and we get to it. In Google, there's actually a more complicated way to do it, as we'll see, because Google has the larger search traffic, and Google wants to save you from yourself, because this disavow link is, could be detrimental to you. You could be getting traffic from a legitimate website, and for whatever reason you still go forward through the process of disavow, suddenly you're going to block out all this valuable traffic of yours. Maybe you made a, you know, you, 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 acted, you acted rashly and you disavowed a, a website that really wasn't a spam website. This one, let's say. Maybe it's not really spam, but let's say I'm going to disavow it. 
So Google makes it harder for you to disavow Bing, not so hard. What my handout is saying is, in my dashboard, I go to configure my site, disavow links. So the dashboard, configure my site, disavow links. This is again to say, I'm not related to them, I don't endorse them, don't take them into account while you rank me. This of our links is for that purpose, to counteract the negative, the negative links. Because I believe you're not a spammer, but the search engines won't until you prove it. So the way this works is three ways. Ignore all of them except domain here. It says, how do you want to block or disavow these links? We've got page, which I'm going to say ignore it, but the way this one works is, let's say we've got spam site.com slash blog slash article 999.html. If I'm saying that one page on this site is bad, disavow that one page. Don't take that one page into account to hurt my SEO. I would say ignore that method because the whole site most likely is spam. The whole site is a, is a, is a spam-generating farm, not the one page. That hardly ever happens. These spammers have a whole machine running this, not just one page. The next level up is to do directory. Okay, everything in the blog is spam, but the rest is good. Probably not. Ignore this one too. The whole site most likely is spam. So really what you'll be doing is the third option, domain. The whole domain is bad. That whole domain is not a good domain. Don't use them. Don't take them into account. Don't let them hurt my SEO. So let me click disavow. In some amount of time, it depends. I can't tell you how much. It's a trade secret. But in some amount of time, Bing will look at this or maybe just do it automatically and then stop showing that link on your on your dashboard and stop counting it as good or bad. As good or bad. So again, be careful. You don't want to disavow a good link. You're going to lose a lot of traffic and rankings. So positive links, you're going to hype them. Negative links, you're going to disavow them. It's rel <coughs> relatively easy in Bing. We need to identify them first, make that spreadsheet, make notes, and then on your notes write, yeah, disavowed on January 21st. And, and it does work, because then as I go through the months of doing all of this stuff in years for clients, I see that sites that were that used to annoy and cause traffic now no longer um, affect the website. Because that traffic also, if it's a spam site, it's it's slowing your site down. Every time someone visits your site, it slows it down a tiny bit. So if you've got these spam sites, 100 spam sites looking at your site every day, that's slowing down your site. And you don't want to have a slow site. That also affects your SEO. So any questions on Bing before we look at Google? What you'll need to do then is we'll go over to google.com slash webmasters. We have two places where we can see our backlinks in Google. We've got two places. Usually we'll be looking at them in Google Analytics, but I want to show you here for completeness. I want to show you in Google Webmaster where you can go to see your backlinks report. So go ahead and go to google.com slash webmasters, sign in, and then I'll show you where to look. Google.com slash webmasters. 
click the uh, sign in to search console button. So after you log in, if you have more than one site, they'll all be listed here. Again, I manage lots of sites, so you see a lot of things. But you'll probably just have one site, like how we set it up last time. Or as we said last time, you want to set up your, your plain one and your WW one. And if you've also got the SSL version, the secure version, you want to set that up. We did that last week. And so um, either one of these can give you the data I'm going to click on one of them, <coughs> one of the sites that further then takes me to the dashboard of that one site. Um, my handout says that in Google Search Console, <coughs> site dashboard, then the search traffic screen, and then the links to your site screen. Uh, so search traffic, links to your site, right there. And you've got your site loaded in Search Console, you go to Search Traffic, links to your site. Different name, same concept. You will see here the data in a different kind of view, who links to you, so here's these websites. They link to most often use, and this basically lines up with Bing. It sees the same kind of data. And then how your data is linked. So basically the keyword that those sites use, they might use the keyword website. So Yellow Book might use the keyword website, and when you click it, it goes over to your so forth. This is not, however, very well correlated to tell you that this one is most used by this one, and it links to that one. It doesn't tell you that for some weird reason. But it does tell me my report here. If I if I look at if I look at these, it'll tell me these are your pages, the number of links. This is a little more cumbersome than than uh, than Bing. That's why I don't use it as much. The detail in Google Analytics is more detailed, as we'll see soon. But um, actually, under who links more, you can click more, and then that'll show you here. So these websites. Again, I would, I would go follow these links to see what is tiffinunbox.com, what is trait.com, what is prlog.ru. And unfortunately, I have to generalize that a lot of the .ru sites are spam, coming from Russia. Um, Chowhound, MapQuest, Meetup, US Directory. So I would check these sites. Are these good sites or bad sites? If they're good sites, again, I go up, I go on Twitter and, and write about this um, great write-up that, uh, that the site wrote. But even Webmaster Tools here is not as good as it has been in that it doesn't tell me the exact page that this one came from. I can see that on Analytics, Google Analytics. We'll see that in a moment. So I don't spend too much time here for clients. I don't find this data very useful on Google Analytics. We'll see, I mean, on Google Webmaster, we'll see. Um, we will see the detail there. So not much to say here. But any questions on Google Search Console? Okay. So we want to see the full data better data over at Google Analytics. So let's go let's go to um, google.com slash analytics. 
A N A L Y T I C S. Google Analytics, at the top right corner you want to click sign in and just to the plain Google Analytics, not the premium one. Haven't had a chance myself to research what's so good about premium. This free one should work, so click on Google Analytics. You will see, in my case, I have several clients set up, so they've all got a folder here known as an account. And in an account, you will have different properties, which can be a website, it could be the Twitter, whatever you're trying to track the data of. But to show that particular client, um, if you click on if you click on your website data, so it might have the name of your website, or it might say all website data. If you click on it. You'll have various screens here, lots of data, lots of different ways. This is where I spend a lot of time on. Not on Search Console, I spend time here. We'll look at a few interesting things. On the left side, we've got several screens, audience, acquisition, behavior, etc. Even real time. Real time is cool because this will tell you who's visiting the website at that moment. So right now there seems to be four people on the site. Real-time overview, and it tells me there how many people were visiting over the past amount of time. What are the pages that people are looking at? They're looking at the Dine LA website, the, the home page, and this McGay plant again. It's coming from traffic from Facebook. So within this most recent time, 30 minutes, this is activity that I'm seeing on, on the site, although from the US and also over here from Vietnam, Thailand, Indonesia. So that's a little bit iffy there, but some traffic from the US. Under audience. Overview. All of these have an overview. Audience is who is your audience? All the details of your audience. What kind of computer do they have? We'll see that cool data in a moment. Acquisition. Where did we get the traffic from? Where did we acquire the traffic from? And behavior. What did they do on our website? So here under audience overview, I'm seeing at a glance our traffic in our last 30 days ups and downs. This could, this could tell me um, if I haven't used any social media yet and I have this waves of up and down, that could tell me that if I ride the wave, if I tweet something on that day, more people could see it. Or I could do the opposite in that, well, what about a day where there's less traffic? I could try to increase traffic on that day to bring it up, so I'll try harder on Facebook. You can set this for longer amounts of time. Again, the longer you have this up, set this up, the more data you have. Let me pull this back for a few months. Let me take it back from October to January. Look at that. I still see those cycles of peaks and valleys. Most of the time, these are from our efforts on social media or other advertising platforms to get traffic to the website. So this is how you can see, is this working? Uh, am I spending time and effort and even money on social media and such, and is it working? At the very least, we're getting traffic to the website. If I further set this up with conversions, conversions would be more concretely to say, um, you've reached these goals. I had a goal of selling more of this food. So, for example, this has got a 1% conversion rate, which is great in, in these terms. 
255 sales of, in that time period from this, from booking a table and such. It's a little too advanced to talk about these conversions, but what I wanted to show is that within the audience we can see <coughs> down here, it's very cool, it says, okay, demographics, language, the number one language. Every time you browse a website, your web browser is telling that website a lot about yourself that you don't realize. One of the basic things your web browser tells the website is what language. So the number one language visiting this website is English. Second is a variation of Spanish. Third, another Spanish. Fourth, another Spanish. Spanish. Sixth, Russian. So we have some traffic from Russia. Again, sorry to stereotype, stereotype, but a lot of spam traffic comes from Russia, China. Country. We can further see that. Where's our traffic coming from? It would make sense in the U.S. because the restaurant's in the U.S. There's also um, the original location was in Mexico, so there's some traffic there. And then there's Russia right there. Why are we getting so much traffic from Russia? Yes, it's really good food, but still iffy on that. Canada, <coughs> you know, Canada tourists maybe. Australia, that's like a little iffy. You know? Well, actually, maybe not. Lamb, you know, lamb is famous in Australia. And this restaurant is all about lamb. So maybe that's why traffic is coming there. Spain, you know, the Latin country and such. Lamb is, is popular in India, perhaps. City, where's the traffic? What cities are generating the traffic to the website? Number one is Los Angeles. Los Angeles has eclipsed traffic from San Diego. This restaurant started in Tijuana, then came to San Diego, then, then also expanded to Los Angeles. And they've been in San Diego since about 2009, I think. And they've been in Los Angeles since 2014. So much younger location in, in Los Angeles, but already much more traffic. Obviously, it's a larger city. Third is not set. That's maybe people browsing in private mode, or their computer's not capable of displaying that, or they are, you know, hiding their location if they know what they're doing. Chula Vista, Mexico City, Ontario, Houston, etc. Okay, well, what's so good about this information? This is pretty advanced, but what I can do is I can do some programming on the website that detects when someone visits from Houston, make a pop-up happen that says, hey, Houston visitors, use this coupon next time you're in town. Well, I wouldn't even know that I've got traffic from Houston unless I check this, unless I set this up. That's about the knowledge is power. Google Analytics and Webmaster Tools and Bing and all of that give you lots of information. What you do with it is up to you, and that's really a specialized thing for people. I can't give an answer to the whole class, but like I just said, you can create some sort of incentive for those people from those regions to buy something, give them a free 20% off thing, and they'll probably end up spending a lot further even deeper here, we won't look at them all, but let's say browser, so your web browser. The second biggest, well the first biggest is Google Chrome, then Safari, Internet Explorer, Firefox, Android, Safari on the iPhone, Opera, Edge, so Microsoft Edge from Windows 10 that just came out is already climbing up to 8. Obviously at one point it was 0, it didn't exist. That's going higher than Amazon browser, and I don't know what Yahoo browser is. I could research it, but we're getting traffic here. Let me tell you this uh, story from a few years ago. Some e-commerce website was caught because what they were doing was they had their store programmed so that whenever someone from Safari, using the Safari browser, came to the site, the prices were a little bit higher than if you visited with any other browser. Who most commonly uses Safari browser? Mac users. And Mac laptops start at $900. So they figured if people rich enough to be starting out with a $900 laptop are visiting our site, they won't mind that our prices are a little bit higher. But they got caught. They got caught and said, oh, uh, we're sorry, our programmers messed up. We'll fix it. So that's obviously a black hat technique, a black hat usage of the data. They figured out that we're going to charge more to Safari users because they can afford it. Uh, you don't want to do that, of course, but 
looking at this data you're seeing here. In the operating system, you're seeing who's the most popular visitors of my site. Number one is Android. I might not have thought of that. So Android people are, spend, are coming more to this site. Second place, iPhone people. Third place, Windows. That's still thousands. They're pretty close. 37%, 30%, 34%, but here's the huge amount of traffic I'm getting. Mac users, and then it drops down a lot, down to 6%. Windows Phone, even lower, Linux, Blackberry. So 25 people on Blackberry visited in the last few months, and one person on their Xbox. So they're playing games and ordering tacos. Um, the point of this is, again, I could, this is advanced, but I can do some programming on the site that whenever the site detects someone visiting on their Xbox, they could pop up and say, hey, gamer, use this coupon when you're done killing those aliens for 10% off. Right? So knowledge is power. I know this. I can craft a better experience for them. Do you pay for that? <coughs> yes, you would be paying for that because most likely it would be customized programming. There really <coughs> isn't that many things off the shelf for free that will let you do that. Um, so it would be an investment. I was thinking my customer view, I really know this thing because I go in for my apps and then when the computer has a much different for something I want to mm. purchase. So I'm using it when I purchase in order to beat this thing, I'm using different computer things to get the more discount uh -huh. because I know if you go in the apps, they're going to be higher. Th that might depend on the website. What websites are you doing that? that for example, like a rental car or you know, airline tickets, if I oh. go into my websites, more well, airline also. tickets, airline yeah. tickets are always yeah. the, the worst. Some of the, you know, I can't name all the things, but some of the big companies, they uh -huh. know this thing, so I usually use different system in order to beat the best price down. Yeah. So, well, there you go, you're using it to your advantage. And yes. here we can actually see the data. <laughs> I didn't know it, but uh, now I know. Now you know the secret. Yes. So what else? You can go in and just go into detail and in interest in geography and behavior technology, all of that. Um, but what we're trying to get at is checking our backlinks because this will give us a great, very detailed report on backlinks. Um, this is over on the acquisition section. Acquisition. Where did we acquire our traffic from? So um, if I look at acquisition overview, all of these have an overview. Let's say overview. So I still have this set from October to January, giving me more time. Because if I only look at this set in a month increment, it might not really give me the big picture. So the longer I have this set up, the longer I can see the, the data. But here in the overview, it's showing the number of hits and such, and the number of people that have been booking a table, this conversion. We've got this goal. When someone books a table, that's an extra win. But here then we see how are we getting our traffic from this simple pie chart. 50, 56% is coming from um, organic search, meaning people that do a search on Google and type in keywords like taco shop or Mexican food restaurant or authentic food, whatever. They're doing a search on the search engines and, and the client is getting traffic from that organically, not that they paid for the placement. So the most traffic, over 50%, is coming from that way. So that means that the site has been optimized. And people are searching those keywords, the long tail keywords, and they're finding the site. Second place is direct, which is that someone visits the site directly. They type the address of the website directly. They type on their browser, akiastexoko.com, or they have on their web browser a bookmark directly to one of their favorite pages. So direct traffic, 29%. People know exactly which page to go to directly. Referral is next. That's about 8% traffic. Referral is sites is traffic <coughs> from other sites. Other sites referred the user to this uh, website. So this is coming over from, from Yelp or from a blog post or, or Twitter. Uh, not, not exactly Twitter, but other websites like blogs specifically refer their website to this website traffic. Then we've got social, which is Twitter and Facebook. And all of that. That's got the lowest 
traffic here, but it's still 1,500 hits. So 1,500 hits from, from social. And I can dig deeper into the data to break it down even further of how effective each of the Twitter and such was. I can go down here to social, and it'll tell me look at these spikes up here and it says Facebook is the one that's got the most traffic and then Yelp and TripAdvisor and then Twitter, Google Plus, etc. Maybe I wouldn't consider that a social network but I guess they do. Even deeper you go to Facebook he tells you how many in the time period how many hits, so 922 83% of those were new visitors, bounce rate, how many pages they looked at, how long they stayed on the site, the traffic from Facebook that actually booked the table, less than half a percent. But that's another concrete way to see is this stuff working. Acquisitions, all traffic and if I go to specifically referrals then here it'll show me the, the websites so from Facebook, Yelp, Rank, Sonic, San Diego Eater and I'm identifying some links here I don't know what Rank Sonic is I'm gonna click it and it'll tell me the exact page the traffic is coming from on the home page, well, what is, I'm going to go look, what is Rank Sonic? They, they linked to the site for a few times here, but not very recently. So I'm, that's kind of telling me that's probably a spam site because there was no traffic from them, and there was a flurry of traffic, and no traffic again. Because Google probably saw that they were spam and didn't, didn't uh, rank them anymore. This site doesn't even exist anymore. But here I'm getting another report of backlinks, and I would do the same thing that I did with, with Bing. If I find a positive link, I'm going to tweet about it. If I find a negative link, I'm going to go through the process of disavow, and the process of disavow on Google is actually harder. I have it listed here. There is no link that I have found easily on Google Analytics or Google Search Console that will take me to the disavow screen like there was on Bing. Because Google wants to save you from yourself that you don't accidentally disavow a legitimate source of traffic. So theirs is more complicated. I have a suggestion here that you do a Google search for Google Disavow tool, and that'll take you to that address. It's in the PDF there. But once you find that address, it's then going to tell you this is an advanced tool. It's going to tell you that this is an advanced tool, and to be careful more you you want to read this more info because it's it's long it tells you this is advanced be careful you could destroy your traffic and rankings if you don't do it right and it's not the same as Bing where I simply paste the address in and say disavow here what you have to do is create a basic text file you open up Notepad or whatever basic text editor, not Word, but a basic text editor, and you have to basically explain yourself to Google. You have to explain it like this. Example.com, remove most links, but miss these. So here I'm telling Google these spam links are still pointing to my site. Here a comment. Contacted owner of ShadySEO.com on 7112 to ask for link removal, but got no response. So the whole domain, take it out. Yes, it's more work on Google. You have to write like a little essay here to explain, please remove these links. Don't take them into account. And they do laughably want you to go through the process of contacting those shady spam companies. Please remove me from your list. They're not. 
if Google wants you to wants to see that you're a good webmaster and trying to keep track of this. You make a simple text file, you upload it, Google will process it, and then those shady sites won't affect you anymore. How long does it take? I don't know. Again, it's a trade secret. Google and Bing might do this quickly or might do it slowly, but it is something to do, like I said, once a month. Check out the check out the traffic here and download it and process it. Make notes, create the document and submit it. So any questions on that? Can you can a company remove uh, bad ratings like on Yelp? No, that's a different kettle of fish. Bad ratings on Yelp, um, you know, bad ratings on Yelp, um, curiously, could actually be good because those bad ratings, you could turn them into good ratings. If I get a bad review on Yelp, I could reply to the person and try to get a good review uh, out of them. I don't mean to bribe them for a good review. I don't mean to say, contact the person and say, we're sorry, here's 10% off you know, try again. We're sorry, here's your me free meal next time. I would not do that. I would not do, do that bribing. That doesn't work because there's a cottage industry of people on Yelp that are going to do bad reviews to get free stuff. So never give away free stuff on Yelp. But you are going to take advantage of Yelp and those review sites to say whatever the problem was and how you fixed it. You're going to say, we're sorry you had bad service that day. Our server was having a bad day. Give us another chance. You know, we're not giving anything away for free. But then that person might try you guys again and turn that bad review into good review. You're showing there publicly on Yelp that you care, that you're trying to fix things. It may then be a real person that had a real complaint, and then they, you fixed it, and then they give you a good review. So you don't know until, until you try. So you wouldn't want to remove bad reviews because you could turn them into good reviews. And Yelp is good enough. It's getting better. At removing the bad reviews because it it sees these these you know these Yelp abusers and removes their 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 negativity anyway. I haven't looked at Yelp in a long time, but I, do I remember right? They don't actually tell you the name of the person on there who made the review. They tell you as far as their username. If I create a username and I call myself Darth Vader, it'll say Darth Vader gave you a bad review. It won't say Victor gave you a bad review. So Yelp does tell you like the username, but that could be a fake name. Uh, so that's as far as you can go. I did have a student come in here a couple of months ago and say that they were they managed to actually sue a bad Yelp reviewer, and it worked. Now that's very rare, but they managed to corroborate the information and such, and saw that this bad reviewer was just a was a, was a spammer, and got him into California court and won. But it's highly un uncommon. Now, I, what, I, what I would also say about the Disavow Links tool, be careful with it. Don't use it simply to help yourself at the detriment of others. Like, if you've got a link from your competitor's website, don't go to Disavow and take that out. Just because you hate them and they're your competitor doesn't mean you want to remove that traffic. They may have traffic that they're bringing to your site and it helps you. So don't use that disavow tool as a weapon to take out stuff that you don't want. You do it for real on these web on these spam on these websites that are clearly spam. Don't use as a person, just use a business. Yes, just business, not personal. No vendettas. Like right here, I see right away. I need to go in later today or whatever and take out website analyzer.info. I can tell just from experience that spam. Okay, if you can't tell, share button.xyz. These are spam sites. LA Times is not. Okay, what about even more obvious? Traffic to cash.org. That sounds so fake. But I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. I'll follow the link. I'll check their site. Hopefully, I don't get a virus. And then I'm going to disavow them. I was just wondering if you're doing checking means by means, sometimes they have a, some kind of spire or something, then slow down your computer, isn't it kind of? It is, and that's unfortunately the, that's unfortunately the, 
the challenge, but you'll get good at looking at it like this. Um, Top1SEOService.com. I'm not even going to go check them. I know they're spam. Um, be careful about this one. Everyone making a t.co tico. That is legitimate. That comes from Twitter. It's not obvious, but that's a Twitter service. If you see tico, t.co, it's from Twitter. So don't disavow that one. Sunnyrises.com. I don't know what that is. I would have to check the site and hopefully don't get a virus inside. Twenty two, I know is good. Hostingtracker.com doesn't sound so good already. You know, like why? Again, think about it in terms of innocence by association and guilt by association. Cooking Channel TV is a good site. It's related to food. Discover Los Angeles. The restaurant is in Los Angeles. That's probably good. Sunny Rises. I'm not sure. I have to check it. Rachel Ray Magazine. That's good. The list goes on. Dot com. I don't know. I might have to check it. It might be a top list of, of good restaurants, or it might just be a spam site full of lists of top Canadian medications. So I'll have to check that out. And this one here, this doesn't have anything to do with it. And, uh, sounds you good. Google you have to type it down to PC, but if you have a TV of it, not a binding of internet that each site with a grocery. Yeah, that's why Google, it's more annoying with Google. You do have to, you do have to go in and uh, write that little document for Google. It's more effort and such, but they're the bigger search engine, 60% traffic. So if I removed, this one sounds weird, mioso.typad. Okay, I'm going to remove them. I know that that one's good. I've already checked it. But just by its name, it makes me sound weird, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to disavow it. But no, that was actually good legitimate traffic. So Google is trying to save us from ourselves that we don't accidentally disavow a real legitimate traffic. More work, but it could pay off. So if you resolve to do this once a month, that will be good. So. As we are wrapping up the day, we have this handout to think about and actions to do. The longer you've got your analytics tools set up, the more accurate they will be, and you have a process of what you need to accomplish. So any general questions on what we've talked about today? I'm going to put my notes that I wrote earlier into the network folder if you'd like them. These notes right here about longevity authority content. We'll wrap up. We'll have some lab time until 9.30 if you need any individual help. And that's it for the moment. So we'll do it again next time.